Uh, hi, uh, thank you for uh, joining uh, our next session. Uh, Mal Tuvek, how NLP can help us understand the web attackers. Uh, I'll start with uh, some uh, motivation. Uh, so I, I'm, uh, Ori and I are from uh, Imperva. Uh, where, uh, among other things, we are uh, WAF uh, providers. So uh, uh, what we have in the secu security research team, we are seeing a lot of uh, uh, malicious web traffic that is coming to our, uh, to our uh, customers. Uh, and it comes in different types, different uh, types of attacks. Uh, we see uh, a significant amount of, uh, uh, of, of data there. And all the time, we're trying to continue and improving our security models, our attack models, understand better what attackers are trying to do and how attacks look like, uh, and therefore to provide uh, uh, better and better uh, solutions. So uh, what we did here, uh, we tried to build a, a new security model, a, a new um, glasses to uh, look on, uh, a, on a malicious web traffic. And with this uh, better attack modeling, uh, we try to uh, use it for different applications, like uh, analytics of attacks, a reconstruction of the attack narratives to, to understand how the attack looked like and what are the attackers want to achieve, and also for uh, improving our, uh, the accuracy of the rules that we are using and to detect uh, false negatives. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, Itzik Mantin. I'm a lead scientist at Imperva. Uh, I'm a security innovator, algorithm developer, and uh, in general, a problem solver. Uh, in the last couple of years, my f main focus is to uh, harness the, the, the huge leap in AI technology uh, that change essentially every, uh, every industry, uh, to use it and to harness it to the, uh, for the sake of uh, improving uh, cybersecurity applications. Uh, and um, I hate to be at the office, so I compensate my office hours with uh, a lot of uh, uh, hiking, biking, trail running, and anything that you can do uh, outdoors. And uh, I'm Ori, I'm a data scientist at Imperva, and uh, I work uh, along Itzi alongside Itzik. Uh, I like to find uh, innovative solutions to complex problems, and I'm very disappointed with the last season of uh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so I think uh, every security vendor, regardless whether it is a web or a database or, or antivirus, or everybody's using uh, AI. Uh, it is being used for, for many, many uh, different uh, uh, usages. I think they can essentially be divided into, uh, into four. Uh, there is this uh, usage of AI for automation of processes, like uh, incident response. Uh, also for, uh, uh, for in enhanced attack detection, like uh, next generation uh, antiviruses. And they are also used, being used for uh, security modeling and attack analytics. And essentially, our research focuses on the it belongs to, to, to the last two, to security modeling and, for, and to uh, attack analytics. So I'll start, uh, our research is, uh, uh, uses actually the, uh, the data uh, categorization of, of uh, malicious web traffic to different attacks. So the most popular attacks in our customers and probably in every uh, website are uh, cross-site scripting, SQL injection, remote command execution, and uh, malicious uh, uh, file upload and uh, uh, path uh, traversal. The data that, we, uh, that we're using for this research is, uh, again, comes from our uh, couple of hundreds of thousands of uh, websites protected by, uh, by uh, our uh, CloudWAF, uh, aka Encapsula. Uh, and uh, we are monitoring, seeing uh, about 200 million, probably sometimes more, sometimes less, uh, data points uh, every day. Uh, each one of them uh, represents suspicious activity that was detected in, in, um, in uh, uh, web request that arrived to uh, one of our customers. Uh, now, something a little uh, uh, delicate here. So we have uh, many sites that uh, we are uh, monitoring and seeing and protecting. Uh, now, our purpose within this research is to understand the attacks and to model the attacks. However, uh, you know, in some sense, like in quantum theory, uh, the fact that we are protecting the website and we are uh, stopping attacks uh, it uh, has an impact on the attack itself, because if the attacker wanted to do uh, A, B, C, D, E, then he will probably do A, B and get blocked, and then will not, be, uh, will not make the C, D, E. Uh, however, we have a significant amount of customers that are working in uh, alert-only mode. So uh, we focus the research on data that came from them, uh, and in that sense, we get uh, this uh, benefit of uh, looking at, at attacks from the beginning uh, uh, till the end without impacting by our analysis or our presence uh, the, uh, uh, the progress of the attack. 
And uh, the model itself, uh, we're using um, a model that is called the word to vec How many here in, this, uh, in the audience are heard about the word to vec OK, so uh, I'll, I'll provide uh, some uh, more details. So uh, as most of you know, uh, some of the, of the leaps forward in, uh, we, that are uh, attributed to AI are in the NLP, speech recognition, uh, translation of uh, text. And uh, most, some of these, significant part of this, uh, can be attributed to the algorithm called word to vec which essentially this is uh, that was developed by Google, I think, three years ago, four years ago. Uh, and what the algorithm does, it takes all the words in the language based on a large corpus of, of, of text. And uh, it uh, does embedding of these words within uh, a high dimensional uh, space uh, in a way that uh, words that are contextually uh, related uh, are getting uh, very similar, uh, getting uh, embeddings that are very close to each other. Uh, and uh, the reason for that, uh, th there are several reasons for that. Some of them are very specific to NLP. Uh, but other uh, motivations to do that is that it facilitates a lot of uh, very fast calculations. Uh, for example, in clustering application, you usually have to calculate an, you know, an n, n by n a quadratic a distance matrix between the objects in your system, which is sometimes uh, very, very uh, heavy. Uh, but if you do this embedding, then it is very, fairly easy to find uh, the, uh, the close vectors to a, given, uh, to a given object and to do it uh, uh, faster. And uh, word to vec uh, captures well a contextual relationship. Uh, and as probably those of us familiar with web attacks, you know that web attacks are not you know, just pixels that are standalone and don't, uh, are not related to each other. If you see something, if you see SQL injection, then you are very likely to see another SQL injection. And you are very likely to see another SQL injection. So uh, this uh, idea of uh, words and sentences uh, is, uh, w well fits the, um, uh, the web uh, uh, application security. The way word to vec works, it is based on a neural network that uh, does an optimization uh, for uh, this embedding. And there are several variants. Some of them are uh, treat uh, the order of the words, uh, like something that is called a skip gram. Uh, the one that we use is called bag of words. It's independent of the order. So it doesn't care about whether I comes before love or love comes before I. It just treats them in the same way, which is, um, ma makes more sense uh, in uh, our uh, arena. And, uh, the, the success of uh, word to vec in, uh, uh, in NLP attracted other domains who try to harness the same success uh, to their world. And indeed, there are uh, in the bioinformatics arena, there are algorithms like uh, Gene2Vec that takes uh, genetic sequences and uh, that does their embedding within such uh, a space. Uh, Geek2Vec, I heard in the Fiverr. Business2Vec, I heard just kind of last week in, uh, in data science conference in Jerusalem. And actually, there is this kind of a trend of uh, anything to vec. And we said, why not? Why not having uh, the malicious uh, web uh, traffic uh, to vec, or in short, uh, mal to vec, and uh, join the party? So uh, here is the, essentially the zoom out of the flow that we are, of the processing that we are doing. So we start with attack data points. Attack data points, they have different types. These types are represented here by colors. A spoiler, we're going in the, uh, when we are going to show the embeddings, they will also be uh, such a, a color coding. Uh, we, do, uh, we aggregate the attacks into sessions in a way that uh, Ori will elaborate on uh, later on. And we then uh, convert the sessions from the attack arena to the, uh, to the language arena. We convert them into sentences. And then we activate uh, the uh, word to vec algorithm to do the embedding. Now, uh, the word to vec can, work, can generate uh, vectors of, of, of different uh, sizes. So we use uh, 30 dimensions in, or in order to uh, give us and you the opportunity to see all these vectors together. Uh, we used an algorithm for a dimensionality reduction, which is called a, a TSNE, a TSNE, in order to uh, throw them into a two-dimensional uh, subspace, and uh, the result is there. OK, so um, what we did exactly uh, for this model? We started with the session aggregation, uh, which means that we take uh, malicious requests that came, uh, that came separately, and we, aggregate, we aggregated uh, those requests into a sentence. 
So a sentence uh, 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 or a session is not the same when we're talking about HTTP session. Uh, I'm going to explain exactly what do I mean by that. The reason we did it is to apply the uh, word to vec algorithm, which is uh, based on contextual information, the same as a natural language, which is arranged uh, uh, by sentences composed of words. So our session uh, or sentence uh, is a list of requests which are grouped by the source IP, the source device, and the target site. Um, and we also added a separation of a 15 minutes interval, meaning that if we did not see any request in that session for 15 minutes, then we split it uh, into two separate sentences. So this is what we did with the, with the, sep uh, the single request and aggregated uh, into a single sentence. So the next, uh, the next thing we had is we wanted to model the attacks, the vector of the attack, um, but we had the insight of the um, security rules that were triggered. So a malicious request is composed of the attack type, uh, SQL injection or XSS, etc., and it has the malicious uh, action, the exploit uh, of the vulnerability or a payload, um, and Impervazwaf detects the known exploits and payloads using a set of rules. So on the one hand, we have uh, the malicious actor, and on the other hand, we have a web server with uh, two types of uh, SQL injection vulnerabilities. Um, and the attacker uh, creates uh, malicious requests and sends them through the WAF, which uh, then blocks these requests using the security rules. Uh, later on, the attacker might create other uh, payloads of uh, requests to exploit the second uh, vulnerability. And again, uh, these requests are blocked by our WAF and triggers uh, the security rules. So now that we have uh, presented uh, this, uh, uh, in, in this concept, I want to talk about how, uh, how the rules are being selected. So a malicious request might trigger more than one security rule. In this example, uh, the SQL injection, uh, we have uh, four different rules that are triggered for the single request. <laughs> and modeling the attack vector into a, uh, a word uh, means that we need to select uh, which rules represent this request. So. Um, we can use the two options. Uh, one option is to use the rule set, meaning that we take everything, all the rules that were triggered for the single request, which is more accurate, but it has an expo exponential number of uh, rule set words. Uh, it grows very large when you have long sentences and, uh, and a very long attack. On the other hand, we chose to, choose, uh, we chose to use one representative rule, uh, selecting it by the severity by how accurate the rule is and how common it is. Meaning that we chose the least common rule uh, to represent uh, a single request. And uh, of course, uh, you have uh, even uh, more complex uh, examples, uh, such as this one, which incorporates uh, eight rules, eight different rules uh, with various types. And again, choosing the, the one representative is based on the the parameters that I've explained earlier. So now that we have uh, the concept of what is a word and what is a sentence, we grouped them together. We took the separate uh, requests, chose uh, a representative rule for each one, and combined them into a sentence, which is now the same as a natural language. We can feed it into the, uh, the word to vec model. And let's see a demo of how it looks. Mm. Okay, thank you, Ori. Uh, so what you can see here is uh, the, uh, the embedding of, uh, of uh, the rules. Actually, this is uh, not all the rules of, uh, uh, of the WAF. It is just a significant amount, uh, a significant portion uh, of them. Uh, the there is the color coding, so the uh, rules of the same type of the same attack category are having uh, the same uh, color. Uh, so, uh, and uh, for example, you can see all this, uh, this SQL injection uh, cluster. And what you see in the, this uh, text 
is actually in the left column, you see the, uh, the metadata about the rule itself. Uh, what is its uh, identifier, its uh, type. And then you have uh, the next five columns are the five nearest neighbors of this uh, rule and their similarity, their location. And uh, the most important item here is these are these numbers which represent the conditional probability, the mutual conditional probability between this rule and the neighbor, which means that, uh, for example, when the, whenever this rule uh, was uh, chosen to represent a malicious request, in two-thirds of the cases, in two out of three cases, uh, we have seen uh, this rule coming either immediately after or immediately before uh, this rule, meaning they were captured within the same sentence. And, when, and for the other way around, it was uh, almost 100%, 93%. Uh, can you zo uh, zoom out for a second? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so uh, you can see the, this uh, SQL injection cluster. Uh, can you point me to this, uh, to this uh, one, Ori? Which one? No, the, the, the bottom one. one, yes. Okay. So uh, this one, this, uh, these uh, uh, guys are, uh, for example, uh, file upload uh, rules which again, we can see them that they tend to come together. This is not very surprising. Actually, this is exactly the picture that we expected to see, because we know when, when someone wants to do file upload and he tries different things, and these, these different things are being captured, uh, captured by uh, different rules of, uh, uh, of the WAF. So we can see here numbers that are even uh, more significant than that. Uh, and um, uh, another example, let's take uh, this one, Ori. Which one? This one. OK, thank you. Uh, this is uh, slightly different, because what we see here is rules of, of different types, of different attack categories that are coming together, which is, uh, at the beginning, it was uh, surprising. But then we looked at these rules, and we see that uh, one rule is a file upload, which means that the attacker tried to, uh, to upload some a malicious file uh, for any, any purpose uh, to, the, uh, to the web server. And next, we are seeing uh, backdoor communication, meaning that someone is trying to communicate with the backdoor. So, uh, but then we figured out that this is very, it makes a lot of sense because attacker at the first moment he tries to do the file upload, and if he succeeds, he then does backdoor communication, and then we wanted to go and uh, let the customer know because this is something that actually uh, happened. It means that it has uh, the file upload was successful and it has the backdoor installed. However, uh, go back to your presentation. So uh, our, uh, some of our security experts uh, provided an alternative explanation uh, that, uh, and showed us uh, this example and other examples. Uh, this is, uh, I think, is called uh, X-Attacker, uh, which attacks um, a plugin called uh, Cherry, where there, there is the, the attack script. What it does is first it tries to do the file upload, the, the upload of the backdoor, and immediately later, maybe even in order to validate that it was successful, he uh, goes and tries to communicate with the backdoor. So uh, what we've seen was not necessarily an, a successful uh, uh, file upload, but maybe uh, an unsuccessful one. OK, so after uh, modeling uh, our uh, war to vec uh, version, which we called mal to vec we came up with a few applications. What can we do with it? Uh, the, first, the first application was to find uh, false negatives. Uh, and by which I mean that we have, uh, we have uh, some security rules uh, which are in research mode, meaning that they are not blocking. Uh, usually we use it uh, to gather information and intel about what's going on f uh, over the network of our customers. Sometimes these rules are just regular rules in uh, staging mode, which means that we want to move them to blocking, but we test them before. So using uh, our uh, version of war 2 vec we were able to identify uh, such rules in research mode, uh, which uh, correlates highly with the other uh, blocking rules, and which is suggested to us that we can use these uh, research rules and maybe create a new uh, blocking rule to capture the uh, attacks that we are not uh, currently protecting against. And I'm going to show you an example of such uh, such rule. Uh, so. Uh, we added to this uh, diagram the one second. Okay, so this is the original one, and we added all the rules that are um, research mode. You can see that they are a little bit transparent, like this one and this one. Um, so next to this cluster of uh, SQL injection, we found a research mode, 
which uh, has a very high correlation with all the others in that group. Uh, it is, when we did the testing, it was not blocking, but uh, you can see that uh, uh, since it is highly correlated with other rules, uh, firing together, uh, this, uh, this is a good candidate to move to blocking. Um, another example that I'm going to show you is, uh, is this one, which is a, um, a remote code execution rule, and again, very highly correlated with other rules. All of this information, based on uh, many, many attacks and requests, is very visible thanks to the, um, to the word to vec model and the TSNI um, dimensionality reduction, uh, which is this uh, diagram that you can see. So, an example, a concrete example of such rule is, uh, is this one, which is uh, the research rule is uh, um, an attack uh, against the Apache Strat vulnerability uh, with uh, over 900,000 hits in three months, and it highly correlated with the path traversal uh, attack, uh, over 700,000 uh, hits per, per, in three months. And the dominant client used to launch these attacks was the White Hat vulnerability scanner. And in our model, in the world to vex similarity, we got a 99.9% uh, similar between these two rules. And so this was the, the main motivation that we came up with uh, to begin with, what we wanted to, to achieve. Um, another application that I want to present here is the scanner modeling. So we wanted to detect uh, automatic tools which uh, impose, impose <laughs> impersonate to be a browser. So uh, how we did it? We created a separate multivec model for a common scanner, one model per scanner. We selected an attack sentence which uh, has a browser uh, as a user agent, uh, Chrome or Mozilla or Firefox. And then we found the model which uh, has the highest correlation with that sentence. And the result was the probability for each model to be the origin of that, uh, that sentence or that attack. So this is a, a concrete example. You can see here that the user agent is uh, Mozilla Chrome, and the sentence is uh, composed of uh, path traversal file upload, an automatic attack and remote code execution. Uh, on the left, you can see the rules numbers, and on the right, the types. And diagram shows the probability um, that the model produced for each of these uh, tools that we, that we modeled. Um, more examples uh, are, are here. You can see the Nessus uh, scanner, the SQL map, which not surprisingly uh, based on the SQL injection attacks. And you can see, uh, on the other hand, that uh, you don't always get uh, the most perfect uh, prediction or correlation. Sometimes you have two set of uh, scanners which correlate uh, with, with high, cor high correlation to the attack. Uh, but it gives us um, better understanding about the origin, uh, even though we ignore the, um, the uh, I don't know, the declared uh, web, web application or, or user agent. Thank you, Ori. Uh, so we, we have uh, several other applications that we had uh, in, in mind uh, that we found the, uh, this modeling uh, useful uh, to assessment of the relation between uh, different uh, events and when we are trying to understand, to reconstruct the narrative uh, of the attacks. We see a lot of, I call this a security pixels, and we want to get security picture to understand which events are related to each other. They belong to the same attack, then we uh, we uh, use the fact that uh, the events had, had triggered uh, rules that are very uh, close to each other as an indication that they are close. And if they are distant from each other, it is an indication that uh, they are not uh, related. Uh, in order to, uh, even for assessment of the severity of the attacks, uh, whenever we see uh, a sentence that, we, um, that uh, uh, includes words that are distant from each other, then one possible explanation is that this is something that is, that is unique, that is not standard. And think of that from a, a security officer perspective. 
whenever someone does a spray and pray and, and activates different scanners, then okay, this, this is yada yada, we are good, we know we are protected, everything is good. But whenever someone is doing something unique, maybe this is a personal attack, a targeted attack, someone is trying to uh, attack specifically this, uh, his application, and this is more concerning and maybe uh, uh, requires uh, some action uh, from uh, their side. And also, uh, it makes us very happy from a research perspective. We have this uh, uh, modeling for, uh, uh, for doing uh, analysis of the attacks. You have a very uh, nice and good picture of, uh, of uh, the, uh, the attacks that we're seeing, the relation between them. And uh, it is good uh, lead generation for uh, analysis of uh, detection of uh, unique things that are happening uh, within uh, our uh, customer's uh, ecosystem. So uh, let me uh, summarize. Uh, so first, I think we've seen that the web attacks fit very well uh, this uh, work to vec model. Uh, this was our basic assumption, and, and, and it was uh, uh, actually we saw that this is uh, this is correct. This idea of uh, of words and sentences and security events and uh, and sequences of uh, uh, of web attacks uh, that uh, seem that these two words have a lot of uh, in parallel, and it can be used for a variety of security applications. We found several ones. Maybe others can find the others. Each one. Uh, in his domain uh, and what uh, uh, anyone with is uh, interest. Uh, conclusions. So first, AI technology is proven again as a game changer in uh, security applications in all w from whatever direction you look at the world of cybersecurity. Uh, AI can be used to, uh, to, uh, to improve it and to make things uh, much better than before. Uh, also from the attacker's perspective, but uh, also from our perspective. Uh, and uh, more important, when bringing security experts and data scientists and data all together in the same room or in the same building or the same uh, world, uh, then uh, interesting things uh, happen. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, any questions? C can you repeat the question? Can you repeat the question maybe from the mic that so everyone hears? Yeah, what are you using to run the models, Hadoop or another system? But which implementation of uh, Word2Vec? Yeah. Uh, we just use the Python library, which yeah. is... I think uh, it is a GenSim? GenSim, right? yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. Any other questions? Okay. So uh, we are considering maybe to release this as an open source at some point. Uh, so um, stay tuned. Thank you.